Puerto Rico is still rumbling with strong earthquakes. Why so many quakes? People are still sleeping in the streets as all these earthquakes are felt throughout the whole island. It's a tectonic battle and it's continuing. The uh, latest earthquakes that we've had today, uh, I'll show you, uh, we'll see together, but we'll first talk about what's happening. Uh, 4.1, 18 kilometers south of Indios, it's in the um, southwest of the island in the ocean. And uh, 4.0, southeast of Guanica, Puerto Rico, 8 kilometers depth. And also even more so, uh, to the west is 4.3 at uh, six kilometers west-southwest of Huig, Puerto Rico, six kilometers depth. And uh, we, remember, we, we remember we had the strong earthquakes a few days back. And uh, they're still ongoing. Most quakes are around four, four and a half magnitude. The uh, earthquakes, why are they still happening? Why is the island still rattling for over a week? Now, just before 9 a.m. local time, January 11th, the magnitude 5.9 earthquake hit Puerto Rico's southwest coast. And that event came after weeks of quakes rumbling through the region. And we saw the, an increase of activity with the past going months, and now it's really, really bizarre. The odds are that the shaking is not over yet. The series includes Puerto Rico's most destructive quake in the century, the 6.4 earthquake, magnitude earthquake that jolted the residents awake pre-dawn hours of January 7, only a day before the magnitude 5.8 also struck in the same region. And since late December, there have been 123 earthquakes of magnitude 3 or higher, which were strong enough for residents near the epicenters to feel, of course, according to the USGS. Six earthquakes of magnitude 5 or higher struck the island, and the events, of course, wreaked havoc in the community, which is still recovering from the uh, disasters of Hurricane Maria and Irma. These latest earthquakes collapsed homes and schools. They knocked out power lines in some regions. They triggered landslides, toppled natural rock arc Punta Ventata, Ventana, the popular tourist landmark that was drawing uh, visitors. And at least, uh, unfortunately, one death has been reported so far. Now, these people have been through a lot. This is what Wendy Bowen, earthquake geologist at the Incorporated Research Institute for Seismology, IRIS, says. Buildings are damaged. People, of course, are afraid because it's ongoing. They've been feeling earthquakes for days and on days. And, uh, of course, as you can understand, the stability of people's lives is uh, not what it used to be before all this uh, started taking place. They're sleeping outside because they don't want to take chances sleeping in their homes, which will be, which are already harmed uh, and wounded by these very strong earthquakes, even if they're anti-seismic, built very uh, strongly to uh, withstand large earthquakes, they still get cracks. So there's a lot of complicated tectonics happening in this close area. It's a, there's a tectonic battle going on. It's on an active plate boundary, just like California, the west coast of the U.S. and um, Susan Hugh of USGS says via email, Puerto Rico's geology is even more complex than most because the island is being squashed in a tectonic battle. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, NOAA and uh, geology of Puerto Rico as well. All right, this is our area, west, southwest of the island, as you can see right here. This is ongoing. These are uh, today's quakes, the blue are today's quakes, and the yellow are the past week. And you can see that it's a tremendous amount of activity. All of this, of course, has been felt throughout the island. This is the Puerto, Puerto Rico Trench right here, you'll see. And we'll see it on NOAA. Um, and um, just make sure that this is what we're going to be looking at, this thing here. Let's pull out a bit. You can see the, oh, we just had one the past hour. All right, 4.8, obviously it's been felt. I'm sure it's been felt. Hopefully it'll be reported. Maybe not yet, okay. Um, these are volcanic islands. The Lesser Antilles and the Greater Antilles are all volcanic islands. 
One of them is uh, Kikim Jenny right here, just about here, is a submarine volcano. And uh, of course, Puerto Rico has volcanoes on it. The, of this whole area, as you can see here, is a, is a crunching area of tectonic crunches. And um, uh, an area full of volcanic activity and earthquake activity. This is Mexico, Colima, Popo, Catapetle volcanoes, and huge earthquakes as well here. Uh, we've even had earthquakes in uh, Montreal. That's where I used to live, right there, 1.7 in Canada. And um, we can see here, look at this. All right, that's magnitude 2.6. Um, even Canada, yes, the red are just the past hour, the past day. Um, so let's go back to Puerto Rico. And, uh, okay, as we said, the past, just, let's just take one, 4.3. Okay, this one here. Oh, 17 people reported it. Of course, it's been felt throughout the whole island. We can see the shakeout map right here. Of course, the whole island is populated right there. Take this off. And tectonic plates. We'll see it right there, the Puerto, Rico, the Puerto Rico Trench right there. And this is where we are. And this is the activities going around around there. Okay. Let's go to our... Uh, Geology. The uh, rocks overlain by younger Oligocene, carbonates and other sedimentary rocks, most of the caverns and karst topography, uh, oldest rocks are about, about 190 million years old, Jurassic and located in Sierra Bermeja. Puerto Rico lies in the boundary between Caribbean and North American plates. This means that it's currently being deformed by the tectonic stresses caused by the interaction of these plates. It's a crunching area. These stresses may be uh, may cause earthquakes and tsunamis. These seismic events, along with landslides, represent some of the most dangerous geologic hazards in the island and in the northeastern Caribbean. The largest, most recent quake, October 11, 1918, was 7.5 Richter scale magnitude. It originated off the coast of Aguadilla and was accompanied by a tsunami. September 24th, 2019, the average, uh, an earthquake of 6.0, well, we've already surpassed that. We had a 6.4. So that was recorded at 49 miles off the island's northwest. This uh, uh, northwest is here. Well, this time here, we're having here, southwest. All right, um, let's go to NOAA. NOAA has beautiful things to show us. The tectonic setting, geology of Puerto Rico and its surrounding seafloor, Michael Cheadle, University of Wyoming. This is the Puerto Rico Trench to the north that we're seeing. North is pointed this way, okay? So uh, that's Puerto Rico right there, Hispaniola. Uh, the Antilles Arc, the volcanic arc that we saw, there. those are all volcanic uh, uh, volcanoes, volcanic islands. The island of Puerto Rico, dynamic plate boundary zone between two tectonic plates, the North American and the northeast corner of the Caribbean plate, as we see here in figure one. All right. The region is very seismically active with an average of five earthquakes, including aftershocks, with a magnitude greater than 1.5 nearly every day. During the last 12 months, March to uh, 14 to 215, although the vast majority of these quakes are too small to be felt. Well, that's not the case now. They're much bigger, as we can see. All right, here we go. The Puerto Rican Trench, the Amer North American Plate, Caribbean Plate. And north is to, uh, to our right, as you can see. And it's moving at about two centimeters a year, which is pretty fast. The northern boundary of the Caribbean plate is sub-parallel to the relative direction of motion of the two plates so that the plate mostly slide past each other, but the motion is slightly oblique to the plate boundary. Historic uh, tectonic history of Puerto Rico Puerto Rico itself is a now extinct volcanic island arc terrain. Okay? Puerto Rico is itself a now extinct volcanic island arc terrain, which started to grow approximately 190 million years ago. 
the island began life as an active volcano. So the island was an active volcano. That's how it was formed. Formed by melting of the mantle. By melting of the mantle as the Pacific plate subducted below the west coast of South America at about the present day latitude of Peru Ecuador border. And beginning approximately 80 million years ago, the island arc was rafted northward and then eastward as the North and South American plates pushed westward and, uh, around the newly forming Caribbean plate. These older volcanic rocks are overlain by younger, less than 30 million years old, carbonates and other sedimentary rock. The carbonate rocks extend off the north shore of Puerto Rico as a gently dipping platform that forms the southern end of the Puerto Rico Trench. In figure one, southern end of the trench, right here. Okay. So it was a, a formed by volcanic activity, as we can see. Puerto Rico Trench. And you can see the depths there as uh, compared to the Grand Canyon, compared to Nepal, compared to Mono Canyon. It's much deeper, as you can see. The trenches and canyons surrounding Puerto Rico, the northern bound, where's north? North is down here. So if that's south, north is down here. Okay. The northern boundary of Puerto Rico is marked by an 800 kilometer long Puerto Rico trench, which is the deepest part of the Atlantic Ocean. I didn't know that. The Puerto Rico Trench is the deepest part of the Atlantic Ocean, with a maximum depth of 8,648 meters. It's the eighth deepest trench in the world and the deepest seafloor outside the Pacific Ocean. The trench was formed by the oblique convergence of the, uh, as the North American plate pushed down beneath the Caribbean. And this shows north-south section of Puerto Rico Trench drawn at the same scale as three other uh, deep canyons we saw here. You can see how deep it is. Okay, and um, the Mona Canyon that we see here, which lies just to the south of Puerto Rico Trench, the Cali Gandaki Gorge in Nepal, one of the deepest gorges found in the continents, and the well-known Grand Canyon in Arizona, which is right here, as we can see. And this is the Mona Canyon right here. Here we see a large landslide, epicenter of the 1918 earthquake, right there, a large landslide. Uh, this is, so this is the uh, this is Puerto Rico. Amazing, landslide into the sea. Um, I could imagine those could cause tsunamis as well. Puerto Rico is bound on the south by the Muertos Trough, on the west by the Mona Canyon, and on the east by the Virgin Islands Basin. Okay, so, bound by the south by the Muertos, Muertos, south by the Muertos Trough, and um, on the west by the Mono Canyon, on the west by the Mono Canyon right here, that's where we had the landslide before that we saw, and on the east by the Virgin Island Basin, Virgin Islands are to the east. The Virgin Islands and the Antilles and all that. So, you can see that there's troughs everywhere. The Muertos Trough is an elongated basin developed where the Earth's crust to the south of Puerto Rico is thrust under the Muertos Fold and Thrust Belt, which lies to the south of the island. And Mona Canyon is an approximately north-south trending canyon, which is almost 30 kilometers across, formed by east-west rifting. The epicenter of the 1918 quake, right there, okay, magnitude 7.5 earthquake located just to the north of the canyon and the earthquake was likely caused by faulting related to this rifting. This earthquake triggered a 6 meter high, 6 meters by 3, about 18 to 20 foot high tsunami wave that swept along the west coast of Puerto Rico. I may have generated the large landslide shown in figure four. This is figure four right here. Figure four, that's the landslide right here from the earthquake. 
Lastly, the Virgin Island Basin is an extensional basin which lies at the southwestern end of the Anegada Trough, a feature that was explored in 2013 by Nautilus, together with the Myrtus Trough, Mono Canyon, Virgin Island Basin, and Puerto Rico Trench to find the margins of Puerto Rico, Virgin Island microplate, the small coherent block trapped between the large Caribbean and North American plates. So that's the geology of Puerto Rico, as we can see. It started as a volcano about 190 million years ago. So this is where we're having our tremendous amount of earthquake activity. And as you can see here, the troughs are everywhere. The Mona Canyon right here, the Puerto Rico Trench, the whole area is... Uh, basically being squeezed, okay? Oh, another one. As we were talking, we had another one this past hour, a 4.5. Okay. So all of you there, please be very careful. We just had a 3.1. Okay. Because they will, be, they will be ongoing. And we'll keep an outlook on this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.